Good morning, class. How's everybody today? Hope you guys are doing well. As you can see, we're going to start talking about and going through the slides for uh, Chapter 5, The Human Body. We're going to look at the National EMS Standards uh, for this competency, which is the area of preparatory, which is your first five or six chapters in your book. Preparatory applies to the fundamental knowledge of the emergency medical services or EMS system, safety well-being of the emergency medical technician, or the EMT, medical, legal, and ethical issues to the provisions of emergency care. Anatomy and physiology, we're going to look at that for a couple minutes too. We're going to see how anatomy and physiology applies to the knowledge of the anatomy and functions of the human system to the practice of EMS as we do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Pathophysiology applies to the fundamental knowledge of the uh, pathophysiology of respiration, breathing in and out, and perfusion of getting the O2 down to the very smallest uh, cells in your pinky to the patient assessment and management. So we're going to start off with the introduction for anatomy and physiology when it comes to the, the human body. So working knowledge of, of anatomy is important. Why do you think that a working knowledge of anatomy would be important to the EMT? No? Some ideas of knowing where your arm is. If you're cutting the arm, that's a good thing to know. What about your leg? What's another name for your finger? What's the medical terminology for your finger? It's phalange. Some things to know because Knowledge of the anatomy helps you to communicate correct information, both with the professionals that we work with in, in medical terms for nurses and doctors and other uh, medical staff. What about to others? When my son or daughter, uh, they, when they cut their hand or their foot, I say their, their hand or their foot. I don't say their phalange. They wouldn't know what I'm talking about. But when I'm talking to a doctor or a nurse, I'll say, hey, they have a one-inch laceration on the top of their uh, one of their uh, phalanges on their hand. You know? Then we have we go to topographical uh, anatomy, which is superficial landmarks. What would be a superficial landmark? These guides, these structures serve as guides that to tell us what lies beneath them. One would be your sternum, that bone right in the middle of your chest there that has that pointy thing at the bottom, which is called what? Anybody tell me? You guys do remember it over there? In the class here with me? What's the name of the bottom? What's the pointy? What's the you just, just talk. They're, they're listening. Oh, you can't hey. see. Me. So, what's the name of the? What's the pointy part of the uh, coming off the sternum? The pointy part coming off the. Sternum. It's called the xiphoid process. That too. <laughs> Topographical anatomy also applies to the body in an anatomical position, which is your your patient standing facing you with his or her arms down at their side with their palms out, which is going to be like this right here. If I can do it. Excuse me. Back up for you so you can see me. This is somebody standing Ms. Johnson, please like this. The That's the Ms. anatomical Johnson, position. The there are three imaginary lines that we use to talk about dividing the body. This is called planes of the body. And there are three main areas. This is the, uh, the Cornell plane. Um, this is front and back. You have the transverse or your axial plane, which is going to divide you top and bottom right above the right at or above the belly button. And you also have the, the uh, sagittal or lateral plane to divide your, your body into right and left halves. Hey guys, they can hear you. Here are the planes as a pitcher. Guys, can you guys go over there and talk over there, please? Because yeah. it's picking up on it. It's a nice picture of, of, um, of the planes. You will need to, to study these and, and learn these because you'll see them from time to time in, in class, also in tests, uh, both now as an EMT and going for your intermediate or your paramedic or your nurse or your doctor. Then we have dire directional terms. Important when discussing injury location or pain radiation is the anterior. This is going to be your ventral side, which is going to be what? Your front, your posterior, your dorsal. Like a, like a fish has a dorsal fin, it's on their back. Right and left. Then you got to remember, what's my right is my patient's. <laughs> my right will be my patient's left, usually. So right and left, and also your patient's right and left. Superior is closest to the head, and inferior means closest to the feet. So your, your superior vena cava, which brings blood in from your head to your right atrium, is the superior vena cava. The inferior vena cava brings blood in from your, your feet, your legs, your abdomen, up into your, uh, your right atrium. So that's superior or inferior. Nice picture here, uh, and you can also go through and look on your PowerPoints. Now you have your patients right and left. It divides you in different uh, midline and lateral, middle, anterior is the front, posterior is the back, superior is near the head, inferior is near the feet. Proximal and distal. 
this was your father, your furthest point away. So is my thumb proximal or distal to my elbow? My thumb would be distal to my elbow, but my elbow would be proximal to my shoulder. Is that correct? Then we have different movement terms. You have flexion, which is the bending of a joint. Extension is of straightening out a joint. Adduction is motion towards the midline. And abduction would be away from the midline. So just hold up your arm. Curl it up like you're holding, like you're curling, curling uh, whatever you want to do, like a drink. You pick up a drink, and you want to move to your midline as you're taking a drink of it, like a Coke or Pepsi. And abduction would be like you're moving away and putting it back down. Nice pictures of that for you. Other directional terms that we might be discussing. As many structures are bilateral. You have bilateral femurs, both sides, right and left, appearing on both sides of the midline. Then your, down, your atom is divided into uh, quadrants for communication purposes. You have your right upper, your left upper, your right lower, and your left lower. And you'll talk about a whole lot more about those when we get to abdominal injuries. It's a nice picture of what's there, your right upper. That's how it's divided. And we do when you do your patient assessment and you're doing uh, filling the atom, this is what you're filling, the right upper, left upper, right lower, left or lower. Some different anatomical positions for you. Prone is laying on your stomach. Supine is laying on your back. The shock position is with your feet up in the air. You have fowler, which is, which is sitting up, and we have recovery, which is usually going to be on your left side with one arm under your head and your right knee coming up to hold you in place. The skeletal system in, uh, in anatomy, the, skele the skeleton gives you a, a recognizable human form. It protects our uh, vital organs, contains bones, ligaments, tissues, and cartilage. It's the foundation on which our arms and our legs are, are hinged. This includes the skull. Excuse me, that's the exoskeletal, I'm sorry. So skull, your spinal column, and your thorax. Your skull. The cranium is made up of four bones. Your face is made up of 100, excuse me, it's made up of 14 bones. And your form, form in magnum is the opening at the base of the skull, which allows your brain to uh, connect to the spinal cord. We'll talk a lot of more, a whole lot more about that when it comes to different type of uh, head injuries uh, for trauma and also medical. And so we'll get to that more in depth when we do that. As you see that nice little picture there, uh, for the test for this right here, you're only going to need to know the, uh, the 25 main bones of the body, so you don't have to worry about that too much right now. But as you go on, you'll really need to know the anatomy of the head, the face, and the teeth, and everything else. So we'll talk about that more as we get closer to the test time. Some more of your exoskeleton. Spinal column is composed of 33 bones or vertebrae. These, uh, the spine is divided into five sections. You have your cervical, your thoracic, your lumbar, your sacral, and your coccyx. And a good way to remember how these come together for your cervical, your thoracic, and your lumbar is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast, you usually eat breakfast when you're not going to school at 7. So there's 7 vertebrae in the cervical uh, spine. Lunch is what? Usually around noon or 12. So there's 12 vertebrae in the thoracic uh, column. And then most people, not me, but a lot of people eat or want to eat their dinner or their supper, however you want to call it, at 5 p.m. And there's five vertebrae found in your uh, lumbar uh, section. Then you have your um, sacral, which has five, and your coccyx has four. That makes up the total of all your bones for there. Your thorax is formed by uh, 12 thoracic uh, vertebrae and 12 pairs of ribs. Thoracic cavity contains your heart, your, your lungs, your esophagus, and other great vessels. The appendicular skeletal system is going to be your arms, your legs, and their connecting parts and the pelvis. This includes both your upper uh, extremities, your pelvis, and your lower extremities. Upper extremities uh, are going to extend from your shoulder uh, girdle to your fingertips, composed of your arm, your forearm, your hands, and your fingers. The shoulder girth is, comes together with three bones coming together, allowing for movement. It's going to be your clavicle, which is one of the number one bones that's ever broken in the human body. Then your scapula, which rhymes with spatula, and it looks kind of like a spatula, funny looking one. So you have your clavicle, your spatula, and your humerus. 
Which is the longest bone in your arm? Arm the humerus is the supporting bone of the arm. The forearm consists of the radius and the ulna. Radius is on the lateral side of the forearm, and ulna is on the uh, medial side of the forearm. Let's go back to this for a second. Now, if you think about this, the you take a, ra a radial pulse on the radial side, which is going to come right down your thumb, come right off the end of the thumb, but a push there, you should be able to fill a pulse. That is the that is the radius. And the ona is on the uh, other side of your forearm. More about your upper extremities. You have your uh, your hands, your hand and your wrist, which is a ball and socket joint. And their principal bones are the carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. Your pelvis is made up of uh, is a closed is a closed bony ring consisting of three bones: the sacrum, two pelvic bones. Each pelvic bone is formed by fusing of the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. Nice picture there. The ischium here, iliac crest, the ilium, and the sacrum. So this makes the whole pelvic girdle. And we'll learn a whole lot more about that when we come to trauma. Posteriorly, the ilium, ischium, and the pelvis bones are joined together at the sacrum. Anteriorly, the, the pubis, sim, uh, pubic uh, simpsis is where the right and left pubis are joined together. Some more on the lower extremities. The main parts are the thigh, the leg, and the foot. The upper leg, the femur, is also known as your thigh bone. It's the longest bone in the, in the body. The femur connects into the um, pelvic girdle by a ball and socket joint. Greater and lesser, uh, somebody want to pronounce this one? Tortantor, tortantor, are where major muscles of the thigh connect to the femur. You'll hear me say hard words sometimes, so if you guys can pronounce it, you can send it back to me. I know we can have a lot of things online to be able to pronounce words sometimes, but sometimes they make it harder for you to hear and be able to pronounce it from there. I do get better as the, earlier in the morning than I do at late, at late at night for pronouncing words. You have your knee connects to the upper leg to the lower leg at the kneecap, which is called the patella. The lower leg is going to consist of your tibia, which is the part of the anterior leg, which is your, known as your shin bone and the fibula, the lateral side of the leg. You also you have your tib and your fib. The way I learned this is tib is a little bit bigger than the uh, the fibula. The tibia and the fibula are your two bones at the bottom. And has anybody heard of a little white lie? What's a little white lie called? Anybody ever heard of it called a fib? So the way I remember a tibia and the fibula, which one's the smaller one, a little white lie is a fib. So the smallest of the tibia and fibula is the fibula. So because that's a little white lie. Nice picture. As you see here, you, you have your, your fibula and your tibia. Tibia is that nice big bone right there, and the fibula is right here. That's why I say I can remember because it's a little small white lie. Ankle is a hinge joint. allows uh, flexion and extension of your foot. The foot contains seven tarsal bones, five metatarsal bones, and the toes are formed by the phalanges. Phalanges, metatarsals, and your, your uh, contains your metatarsals, your phalanges, and your tarsals. Sorry about that. Joints occur wherever two long bones come together in contact. There are two types of joints. So you have a hinge joint, which motion restricts them to one plane. Your ball and socket, which are going to be your like your shoulder or your hip, allows rotation and bending. So you have your hinge joint, knees, uh, elbow, and your ball and socket, which is going to be your your shoulder and also your hip. Some physiology of the uh, skeletal system. The skeletal system gives the body its shape, provides protection of uh, fragile organs, and allows for movement, stores calcium, and helps you create blood cells. Muscle skeletal system's anatomy. The muscle skeletal system provides form, your upright po posture if you're good to uh, like sitting up like you should be, and movement. There's more than 600 muscles that attach to bone called skeletal or voluntary muscles. There's a video that I'll have on there for you sometime. Muscle skeletal system anatomy. Other types of muscle outside the muscle skeletal system are smooth muscle, which you might find in your, uh, your lungs and in your uh, intestinal tract, and cardiac muscle found in your heart. Nice picture of more muscles there. Okay, we're going to actually get ready to uh, end there for this section. 
Uh, so I ask that you go on and continue working on your chapter uh, five, uh, doing your workbook and also doing your, uh, your worksheet I gave you. And we'll pick up there tomorrow. Thanks and have a great day. I'll talk to you later.